Hi everyone, Neelay Patel here, and I am the owner and designer at Silver Silk and More, and I want to welcome you guys to the Silver Silk and More YouTube channel. My goal for this channel is to bring you guys fun, innovative, and creative projects using Silver Silk. And for tonight's project, as you can see in front of me, I'm actually going to be using some beads from Jesse James beads, as well as some seed beads, and of course Silver Silk, which is what we have up here. So I thought we would put a, a new twist on an old technique called French beading, which is done with wire and seed beads. But I thought the cool thing about this is that we can actually combine some seed beads with some Jesse James beads to create these really fun components. And of course, um, what's a little component without a little pizzazz and tassel, right? So I'm going to show you how to put this design together using wire and the seed beads and um, talk through how I use silver silk for the necklace rope. So let's get started. This is going to be super easy and fun to learn, but we're going to need a few things before we get started. First, I have these little two millimeter um, round, I guess they're called druck beads. Uh, they're just, they're not really seed beads. They're super round. Uh, this one happens to be a bronze metallic color, which will be perfect for our color scheme. And the other thing I've got are size 8 seed beads. On my design, I'm actually using size 11, but you could definitely kind of mix and match to your liking. Um, I just happen to be using bigger beads. I just kind of wanted to see the different effect that it would have with our shapes. Um, I've also got a couple crystals, and then I've got a large decorative bead from Jesse James Beads as well as a tassel and a smaller crystal. So other than that, we'll need a couple different types of wires. The first one is a 22 gauge wire. This is in a bronze color. And I believe these came from Softflex wire, so you could definitely check that out there. The other one you'll need is a size uh, 26 gauge in the same color. Now, of course you can Definitely do this technique in any color that you want, silver, um, gold, uh, copper. Uh, again, it's just depending on what palette you're using. So the first thing I want to do is pick up my 22 gauge wire, make sure that it is nice and straight. And then I'm going to find my two thirds point, which is about right here. And I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and I'm just going to go ahead and give it a squeeze directly right on that wire. So you'll start to see a little dent form. Um, it's hard to see, but you can kind of see it right there. So that whenever I start to do my wire wrap for the first time, that's going to actually grasp onto that area for this particular technique. So what that means is that I will find that area as close as I can get. And then I'm just going to do a couple of wraps with my 26 gauge wire, just like that. And I'm going to coil it pretty tight. And I want to make sure that it is within that area that I just flattened. There you go. Um, all this other stuff you can probably just cut off later if you want to or now, it doesn't really matter. Um, I'll probably just cut it off later, that way I have it nice and clean um, all at the end. But for now, what I want to do is go ahead and string on one of my decorative beads, which happens to be this guy right here. And I want to string on my um, little crystal. Now the reason is for this is that whenever I start to do my wraps, it's going to create that leaf shape automatically. That way I don't have to sort of extend out my wire or my beading. Um, it just is kind of an inherent part of the design, which is actually quite nice. If you wanted a more round shape, you can definitely take away that crystal and just wrap around the bead directly. I've done that before. Um, I've done here on this, si uh, this side, I've got two crystals, so it makes more of like a oblong shape. So there's, there's many ways to um, create shapes out of this particular technique, which is really cool. But now you just, uh, you can go ahead and string on your beads. I'm going to start with the small two millimeter drug beads. And this probably is the most tedious part, but can't get away from stringing, right? So I'm just going to go ahead and you can go ahead and, um, take a mental note of the count that you're doing of the seed beads if you want it to be super symmetrical on both sides. Um, I'd highly recommend doing that. I think that's actually what I did for these, except for the seed beads, because those can get really tedious to count. So those I kind of just estimated once I got the base layer of my design down. Let's see, so 
What I want to first do is actually measure it, and then I'll probably go back and count how many I've used, and then I'll go back and string the same number of beads. So it looks like I was halfway there, um, which is good. So the bigger the size of the seed beads that you use, or beads, um, or crystals, whatever it may be, the quicker the technique will go, but the less detailed it becomes too. So it just depends on what kind of look you're going for with this particular technique. Um, ooh, I like that. So there we go. Okay, so one, two, three. We've got four, five, six, uh, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, and 16. Okay, so I have 16 on there. Just restring this guy back in. And like my crystal disappeared <laughs> somewhere uh, on my artboard. Let's see if I can find it real quick. I'll just grab a replacement. Okay, let's just string this back right in and string my crystal back on. And it looks like I've got 16 of those little beads. So what I'm gonna do now is just actually coil this around once. Keeping it minimal will keep my overall beading very clean, but it'll still hold um, because it is wire. So here we go, 16 again. Now I don't have to worry about my beads flying out because it's all secure. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, and sixteen. All right. So kind of the same method up here. Now that I have everything kind of secure on my wire, what I can go back is, while carefully holding um, one side of that, I'm gonna unravel this once, a couple times to get my coil back in order. It is holding on the wire where I did pinch it. So that's good. Go back and uh, clean up my coil there and Try and press it in as best as you can, just like that. Perfect. So now I'll actually go ahead and um, coil right on top of it. I'm just going to do it once again. As you can see, it uh, cleans up quite well right there. So that's the base layer of my shape. What I'm gonna do is, because I've got a bigger bead that I'm using, I'm gonna need a little bit more area to make that a nice, comfortable fit there. So I'm actually gonna coil this a couple more times just to get it kind of stacked on top of each other, just like that. That way, whenever I create my second row, uh, all of the size eight C beads will fit very perfectly. Um, they won't be staggered or um, doing anything out of alignment. So hopefully that makes sense. So whatever the size of your bead is, that's how many times you want to make sure you coil from that stem upward. So now I'll just go ahead and string on my size eight seed beads. As you can see, it's going pretty quickly because these are larger beads. There we go. And uh, you can see already the difference between that and my original design. Or is there? I don't know. Um, I guess it's just the level of detail that's in it, but overall it still looks exactly the same, <laughs> I suppose. Uh, I would advise probably no more than four rows, because then it starts to really get a little bit messy with the coiling. I think that's as many as I've been able to do and still have it nice and um, everything nice and tight, I guess. So that looks pretty good. I can't confirm how many I've strung on there, but 
again, because my base row is done and I'm only doing two rows, I think I can get away with not counting on that. I just want to make sure that it is tight, aligned well, making sure that nothing is forced or too tight. So then I'll just continue to do my second row. And then we can go ahead and add in the other additional elements to our component. And you could see how quickly this was to bead together. A few more, maybe. Let's see where that lands us. Probably need a few more. Yeah, probably about four more. I can make these all day, you guys. It's such an easy technique to do and so much fun. But I think it also complements Jesse James beads very well um, because you can really hit up those accent colors and bring them out with the seed beads. There we go. That looks really good. So now I'll just go ahead and coil it. I'm going to actually coil this maybe two or three times just to get it nice and secure, just like that. It'll hide away inside of the seed bead so you don't even see it, and you can actually just trim this off just like that, as close as you can get it to the stem, and then just pinch it around to make sure nothing's sticking out. And then we can start to complete our component. Um, it looks like we've just got a simple loop there at the top, or we could do a wrap loop, get a little crazy here. Um, let's do that real quick. So I'll go ahead and make my 90 degree angle. I'm gonna grab my round nose pliers that I have pinch down on my round nose, and then I'm gonna fold my wire right around one of the nose mandrels, just like that, to get myself a nice round loop. Perfect, there we go. And then grasp the loop with my chain nose pliers, and then just twist around. You can get it as close to the component or as far away as you want. Looks like I got a pretty good distance, which I like. Again, I'm just going to trim it close to my component right here. Voila. Okay, so now we can make the bottom part of it. Looks like I've got a crystal and then followed by just a regular simple loop. And then I've got my little um, tassel attached to it. So I have this crystal, that's handy. And now I'm just going to trim my wire there and grab my round nose pliers and just make myself a nice little easy little simple loop. Just like that. Now what I can do is open this up. Go ahead and string on whatever tassel or component or bobble you want to. And just press it back down and here we have a quick little component to add to our design. Now, to complete this design, because you gotta make a bunch of these, right? All I did was I just took a chain, I think this came from Vintage, um, these particular links, and then I just kind of jump ringed it together. Uh, but then I just attached all of my components to the bottom link, or bottom area of the link um, there on my design, as you can see right there. They're all at the bottom there so that they just hang down. And then all I did was just connect, use a triple strand end cap silver silk one. Um, this is the gunmetal color. And then I'm using the antique copper with the, what this is is it's the, uh, yeah, it's the um, antique copper chain. Um, and it's got a gunmetal colored ball chain on the inside of the knitted wire. So therefore you got this sort of darker effect uh, happening here. And, um, I think that complements my design very well in this sort of dark aesthetic that I've got going with the with the browns and sort of the dark colors. So connected all that together, all I did was just press my end cap right onto that silver silk. I didn't need any glue, no special tools. You just use your uh, nylon jaw pliers to squeeze it together. And I actually don't have a clasp on this. I just cut my my knitted wire into three strands and have a longer chain at the bottom. That way you just kind of overhead string it onto yourself. <laughs> um, so it's super easy. 
and I graduated the size of my beads so that I've got something bigger going to something smaller. So that's really it um, as far as my design goes. And again, it was very easy to put together. I absolutely love this design. But if you want to continue to see more of these tutorials, please subscribe to my YouTube channel. And I hope to see you guys next time.